If you've ever taken a physics class, you've definitely heard of conservation laws. They're among the most fundamental laws in physics and are a great tool for solving many different problems. One of the more well-known conservation laws is the conservation of energy, which says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transformed into different kinds of energy. This is incredibly useful for solving problems that deal with free fall, projectile motion, a ball rolling down a ramp, springs, pendulums, and so much more. For a long time, it was believed that conservation laws were fundamental. That is, until general relativity came around. The thing is, in general relativity, energy isn't always conserved. An example of this is redshift. Since the universe is expanding, electromagnetic radiation gets redshifted. This means that its wavelength is increased and its frequency is decreased. And since the energy of a photon is represented by the equation E equals hf, a decrease in frequency also means a decrease in energy. And this energy isn't simply being converted into a different type of energy. It's simply gone. Another example is dark energy. We know that the amount of dark energy per some amount of volume is constant. If the universe is expanding, then its volume is increasing which means that dark energy must be created out of nowhere, violating conservation of energy. And by the way, these two examples don't cancel each other out. Energy is being created much faster than is being lost to redshift, leading to a net energy gain in the universe. Understandably, scientists like Einstein were confused. They invited the help of a mathematician named Emmy Noether, who discovered that conservation laws actually aren't fundamental and created Noether's theorem. So then, where do conservation laws come from? In simple terms, Noether's theorem says that for every symmetry in the universe, there exists a corresponding conservation law, and vice versa. So what does that mean? Well, first let's talk about symmetry. When we think of symmetry, we usually think of a butterfly, or geometric shapes, or anything else that looks the same when reflected. That's discrete symmetry. But we're not talking about that kind of symmetry. Noether's theorem deals with continuous symmetry. A system is said to be continuously symmetric if you can apply some kind of transformation to it and still have it behave in the same way. For example, here's a ball moving in a straight line. If we move this system to a different part of the universe, it will still travel in the same way, as long as there are no external forces. In other words, its position in space doesn't affect its motion. What if instead of space, we changed time? Does the movement of the ball depend on when it moves? Would it behave differently during the day or night? No. This means it has temporal symmetry. Now let's say the ball is orbiting the Earth. It doesn't matter how much we rotate the system by, it will still look and behave in the same way. This is rotational symmetry. These are just three examples of continuous symmetries. So how do we get from symmetries to conservation laws? To do that, we need to do some Lagrangian mechanics. In simple terms, Lagrangian mechanics is a way to describe the motion of systems using energy as opposed to Newtonian mechanics, which mainly relies on forces. In Lagrangian mechanics, we deal with Lagrangians, which are operators represented by the equation kinetic energy minus potential energy. To see how Lagrangian mechanics connects to Newtonian mechanics, let's look at an example of an object in free fall. Its kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and its potential energy is mgx. Since we're in Lagrangian mechanics, we can describe this system by substituting this Lagrangian into what's known as the Euler-Lagrange equation. Let's first look at the partial derivative of L with respect to V. If you already know how to take derivatives, partial derivatives aren't much harder. You just take the derivative with respect to one variable and assume all other variables are constant. So the partial derivative of this Lagrangian is equal to mv. If you remember, mv is the equation for momentum. Now take the partial derivative of L with respect to x. This gives us negative mg. So simplifying this equation, we get the derivative of momentum minus negative mg is equal to 0. Since the derivative of momentum is force, we can rearrange this equation to get f equals negative mg, which is Newton's second law of motion when applied to an object in free fall. So how do we use this concept to derive conservation laws? Well, first, we have to define a cyclic coordinate, which is a value that does not explicitly appear in the Lagrangian, meaning that the result does not depend on it. Let's look at a system with translational symmetry. Since its position doesn't matter, x is irrelevant. So let's set this whole term equal to c. 
Since x doesn't explicitly appear in this Lagrangian, it's our cyclic coordinate. Now substitute this into the Euler-Lagrange equation. The partial derivative of L with respect to V is still mv. But the partial derivative of L with respect to x is now 0, since all variables besides x are assumed to be constant. So the Euler-Lagrange equation now becomes the derivative of mv is equal to 0. The rate of change of momentum is 0, meaning that the momentum is constant, or in other words, conserved. So we see that our system with translational symmetry will conserve linear momentum. We can repeat a similar process for other types of continuous symmetries and derive their respective conservation laws. And that's one way Noether's theorem can be proved mathematically. So in the end, are conservation laws always true? Well, not really. For everyday systems, they're so close to being true that we usually just treat them as if they were. But in fields like general relativity, the same laws just can't be applied. And by the way, without Noether's contributions, it's possible that we might not have general relativity today. By creating this theorem, Emmy Noether created one of the most beautiful theorems in physics, unifying the worlds of symmetry and conservation. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.